If you've been thinking of pursuing a management in information systems course or MIS course, this video is for you. This program is known by many names. For instance, MIS, there's MSIS, or there's MISM. All of these are essentially acronyms of just MIS, to be honest. Now, this video has been curated based on the 15,000 plus admissions and rejection decisions that you guys have told us about. These are the most popular universities that we could find that you guys applied to for MIS programs in the last three years. All of this data is verifiable. It's free. You can go ahead. You can check it out by yourself if you want. And no one's going to be stopping you or asking for any charge for that. Now, remember, before we move forward, I want to tell you about the ideal candidate for MIS. The ideal candidate will have somewhere around two years of work experience. Could be less, could be more, but somewhere around. They would have a good academic performance and if possible, they will have two to three research papers published in some good journals. If you can provide that, you're a very good candidate. And of course, you should have an interest in actually managing data. Managing data means anywhere from cleaning data to systematically storing it to retrieving it fast, doing a lot more with data than you would probably with people also. That's going to be your job after you study MIS. And you're going to be a well sought out professional and you will have a salary bump as well. Rest assured. Now, based on the data that we've talked about, let me give you the top 10 universities that you guys have applied to for MIS programs in the last three years as for the 15,000 admits and rejects that we have on our website. Remember, these universities are in no particular order, no particular ranking order, or the quality of the program, but I've mentioned all 10 for you in this video, so stick around. And if you need help with your admissions or in choosing MIS or any other program, you can WhatsApp me directly. My number is in the description. The first and foremost, the most applied university for MIS was Northeastern University. Kept this on the top simply because there was no beating it. There was no competition. A couple of advantages of uh, Northeastern's program is that you have the co-op option. It's the number one in the US for co-op. That means alternating semesters of study, work, study, work. And that's why this program is so popular because you directly get industry experience related to your program. Here's a scatter plot of GPA versus test scores to help you understand if you will make it to any use program. Remember, all of these scatter plots are directly taken from vimegrad.com's university pages, so you can go ahead and visit it to find more like this one. The second program is CMU. And Carnegie Mellon University, established in 1900, has created an immense reputation in the market, even though there's many older universities out there. But CMU didn't listen to anyone. CMU's program is called MISM, and it's a 12 to 16 month program. So it's in two options, actually. You can go for a 12 month program or a 16 month program. My personal recommendation is that you carve out 16 months because it's going to be worth it. Honestly, to me, this would be one of the shortest pathways to proceed into an information systems management role and it's going to be worth it because CMU, after sending candidates to CMU, what we've seen is the kind of jobs they get, it's unmatched to almost any other university out there. Here's the chart for CMU, GPA versus test scores and you can see if you would get in. The third one is University of Texas at Dallas and the program is called MSITM. Now, while it's a very popular program, as you can see from the chart over here, what I also want you to do is to pay attention to the fact that UTD is a part of Texas. That means that you would be eligible for the competitive tuition waiver. That means even if you can secure just a $1,000 scholarship from UT Dallas, you are eligible to pay now in-state tuition instead of out-of-state, which means that as an international student who generally pays thirty dollars to $50,000 of tuition, now you're just paying about fifteen dollars to $20,000 of tuition per annum, which is a pretty great deal, right? So that's one major point to take into consideration. Apart from that, UD Dallas has great reputation in the market when it comes to management and engineering programs. So it's a mix of both. So it's definitely a good option to go forward with. Please note though, this data is of three years that I've shown you on the screen. And while you'll see a lot of green dots, I'm telling you that UDD has gotten recently quite GPA-centric. So keep that in mind. 
The next one is University of Maryland at College Park. Excellent program and I can assure you if you're getting into this program, you will not walk away without a job. This should be a part of your ambitious list if you have a decent profile like I mentioned before. The program is generally two to three semester long with a 93% placement rate. And the chart of the GPA versus test scores is visible right here so you can see if you stand a chance. University number five is Indiana University at Bloomington. It's got a great market value and even better placement rate at 97%. I would say this is probably the highest on the list. Take a look at the chart of GPA versus the GRE and GMAT to understand if you have a profile that can get in. Number six, most popular school applied to was Stevens Institute of Technology. Now, personally, I wouldn't be a very huge fan of the Stevens program, but I can tell you that there's all kinds of programs in the market, all kinds of candidates that we've worked with. And for some candidates, this is a requirement simply because the profile may not be as competitive, right? It is a very popular program amongst Indian applicants. Most applicants are able to secure a job after the program, so that's great. Right. And personally, for me, if you have a decent profile, I would call this a safety school. But otherwise, if you don't have a decent profile, then you should certainly apply because this would still be a school that would be prone to give you admission and you can at least have this as a backup. The seventh university, most popular list is Syracuse. Now, personally, I love Syracuse because their location is great. They're based out of New York itself and they have given great scholarships in the past. You can verify this on uh, ymgrad.com slash admits rejects. You'll be able to see the decisions. You'll be able to see what kind of scholarships Syracuse has offered in the last couple of years to students. So that's why I would say it's a good fit. You can take a look at the chart of GPA versus GMAT GRE to understand if you can get it. The eighth very popular program over here amongst you guys was Arizona State University. Now, generally, this is a 12 month program. This is one of the shorter programs in the list there, guys. And the program is called MSISM. The good part about this program is that even though it's just 12 months long, it's STEM OPT eligible. That means after this 12 month program, you get three years to work in the US without any interruptions, as long as you're able to secure a job in your field. Remember, it's 12 months, so you need to work a little bit harder to network so that you can get the connections that can help you get a job. I would say this is a very good program to get you a quick career boost, but I would not recommend this for applicants who have less than two years of work experience. Only if you have more than two years, you go for this program. The ninth very popular program is also from the state of Arizona, and that's University of Arizona itself. It's a 16 month program, so it's a bit longer than ASU. Again, decent location, 92% placement rate. So for me personally, if you ask me, I would place this in ambitious to moderate category for most of the applicants out there. Now there's a little less data available for this one, but the chart is available here so you can understand if you'd be able to get it. Finally, number 10, 10th most popular university was University of Illinois at Chicago. This program comes with a GRE and GMAT waiver. That means that you don't need to take these tests. All you need is an English language test like the TOEFL or the IELTS. And sometimes even the Duolingo is being accepted in certain universities. Now, personally for me, if you ask, I would place this in moderate to safe categories for most of the average profiles. It's got a decent location and good placement rates. And you can take a look at this chart to understand if you would get in. And remember guys, after this 10 universities, this is not the end. If you need help, Personally, from me, reach out to me. My WhatsApp number is in the description and I'll be happy to help you with your admissions for the MIS program or any other program that you might be interested in. You can also subscribe to the channel and follow us on Instagram to stay in touch. And thank you so much for watching this video. Goodbye until next time.